Hey gamers, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to dive into the rumors and everything we know so far about the GPU powering the highly anticipated Nintendo Switch 2. We're going to dive into what this GPU is, break down its components and specs, and talk about how powerful it is and compare it to the original Nintendo Switch, and then I'm going to throw my thoughts in there at the very end. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to catch my future tech videos where I talk everything tech on this channel. And if you enjoy this video at all, smash the like button. That way YouTube will actually share this video to other people who may enjoy it as well. I really appreciate all your support. Now let's just dive into this. The beating heart of the Nintendo Switch 2 is rumored to be the custom chip called the NVIDIA Tegra T239, codenamed Drake. This chip is built on NVIDIA's Ampere architecture, the same tech behind the powerful RTX 30 series GPUs. The T239 combines a CPU, GPU, and memory controller all in a compact package tailored for gaming efficiency and portable power. Compared to the original Switch's Tegra X1 chip, which uses the much older Maxwell architecture, the T239 promises a generational leap in processing power and graphical fidelity. Ampere brings cutting-edge features such as real-time ray tracing and DLSS, but we'll talk more about that later. I want to start by diving into the GPU of this chip, starting with the CUDA cores. Now these are small computational engines inside the GPU that process graphical data. The T239 chip is rumored to have 1536 CUDA cores spread across 12 streaming multiprocessors. Now this is a giant leap compared to the Switch's X1 GPU which only had 256 CUDA cores. More CUDA cores mean the GPU can handle more complex calculations at once resulting in better graphics, smoother gameplay, and faster rendering time. Now, like the Nintendo Switch 1, the GPU operates in multiple modes depending on how the console is being used. The Switch 2 is reported to have a GPU clock speed of just over 1 GHz in docked mode and cut almost in half to 561 megahertz when in handheld mode. This frequency scaling is a clever way to conserve battery life when the system is undocked while still delivering full performance as an alternative option. Now, it may seem dramatic cutting your clock frequency in half, but it's pretty clever how the original Nintendo Switch did this. You see, the original Switch would max out at 768 megahertz in docked mode with its GPU and would drop to 307 in handheld mode. So we're looking at a similar story, although not as bad as a reduction this time around with the Switch 2. However, the Switch allows for performance scaling. You see, because the Switch itself had a 720p screen, games could reduce their resolution in line with the clock frequency reduction, as well as change some of the graphical settings and lower them as well. And because it was on a smaller screen, even though it was 720p and games often, especially the more intense and newer games at lower resolutions than 720p and upscaled, it still looked good. And there's a lot of games that arguably look better on the Switch 1 in handheld mode because of this. Now I'm expecting to see something similar with the Switch 2. Maybe it targets 1440p to 4K using aggressive upscaling. Who knows? We have no confirmation on any of that. But when you use it in handheld mode, the most you're going to get is 1080p with also possibility of upscaling, which would again fall in line with the reduction of the frequency. So just something to note there that we are definitely going to expect to see that return, and that's what we're looking at right now based off of these rumors. Again, everything needs to be confirmed with Nintendo, but that's what we're looking at so far. And now that we know the GPU frequency and CUDA core count, we can calculate its theoretical performance in teraflops. Remember, a teraflop measures how many trillion floating point operations a GPU can perform per second. In docked mode, the GPU runs at just over a gigahertz. 1,007 megahertz to be exact. With 1,536 CUDA cores, using that good old teraflop formula, that gives us a peak performance of 3.09 teraflops. And in handheld mode, with a reduced clock speed of 561 megahertz, the GPU still delivers around a 1.72 teraflops. Now to put this in perspective, the original Switch managed to get around 0.4 teraflops, so that's 400 gigaflops. This is at least six times more powerful in handheld mode versus the docked mode of the original Switch, and puts it in line with about what a PlayStation 4 would be in handheld mode, and when docked, puts it a little bit under an Xbox Series S or a PlayStation 4 Pro. But that's still three times stronger than a regular PS4 when docked. Something like that out of Nintendo, well, we all know they're going to take a lot of advantage of that type of hardware, which does kind of continue in line with what we've seen so far with the Switch, right? When the Xbox One came out and the PS4 came out, the Wii U was still the thing for Nintendo. And when the Switch did come out a few years later, you know, after the Xbox One and PS4 came out, 
the original Switch was more in line with Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 levels of graphics, obviously updated modern architecture. And now we're seeing that generational leap and bound again with the Switch 2 being as strong as the last generation PS4 and Xbox One when the Series X and PS5 are way ahead of it. So I'm going to be honest, I about expected this level of performance and honestly used to think getting PS4 Pro or Xbox Series S levels of performance out of the Switch was hopeful and I probably wasn't going to get it, but I am glad to see when docked we're not too far off in terms of raw GPU compute. Now with the new Switch, we have additional features that the T239 SoC is able to support at a hardware level. And that is deep learning super sampling or DLSS, as I've mentioned earlier in the video, as well as real time ray tracing. And so DLSS uses AI to upscale lower resolution images, making games look like they're running at higher resolutions without needing the deep GPU to do all the heavy lifting as if it is rendering at those resolutions. And in fact, renders them at much lower native resolutions giving you the performance of that resolution with the visual quality of a much higher one. This can be a game changer for the Switch 2, especially in handheld mode, where performance has always been limited. Ray tracing, on the other hand, enhances visuals by simulating how light interacts with objects in real time. Think realistic shadows, reflections, global illumination. While it's unconfirmed whether these features will even be fully utilized in the Switch, there's nothing saying DLSS or ray tracing will definitely be included. So until we get confirmation from Nintendo, we're just assuming that based off the hardware from NVIDIA that it is capable of doing it, that we are going to have access to that. And given Nintendo's tendency to prioritize creative gameplay over raw power, we might just see them utilize DLSS more than ray tracing if both features are included as we all hope and it kind of leans into this with the hardware you got 48 tensor cores and two rt cores so the ai upscaling is definitely a focus in the hardware based off the rumors and ray tracing seems to be on the back burner and the reason i say that is to put it in perspective an rtx 3050 gpu has 20 rt cores so you have 10 times more rt cores in a budget desktop gpu than you do in the switch so if nintendo does utilize ray tracing I'm sure it'll be for minor things, not reflections or even shadows, but maybe some ray trace GI at a low level. I'm not too sure how they're going to throw that in there, but definitely not enough to make a huge impact, but at least it's there. So maybe with Nintendo's creativity, they can find a way to implement that in a really gorgeous way while also utilizing DLSS to make it realistic. Now, finally, the RAM, of course, and its bandwidth are going to affect graphics, even though this is GPU focused. But we do have to touch base on the RAM and its bandwidth because it is using shared system memory. It's rumored to come with 12 gigabytes of this LPDDR5 RAM, which is a big upgrade from the original 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 the original Switch used. This 3x increase in memory size and higher speeds means faster data transfer rates, reduced load times, and better multitasking capabilities and power efficiency. The Switch 2 isn't far off from being almost three times faster in terms of bandwidth, with the Switch 2 coming in at 68 gigabytes a second versus the Switch's 25.6 gigabytes per second, which is absolutely necessary between the increase in RAM as well as the bandwidth increase in order for the Switch to have any chance of targeting these higher resolutions with or without DLSS. So now let's bring everything all together and really compare the Nintendo Switch 2 and what these rumors are saying we're going to see in terms of its hardware on its GPU with the original Nintendo Switch and the Tegra X1 GPU. So to summarize, the Switch 2 is going to be 3.09 teraflops when docked, 1.72 teraflops in handheld mode, versus the Switch 1, which has a 0.4 teraflops when docked and under 0.2 teraflops in handheld mode. And this is a result of the Switch 2 having 1,536 CUDA cores over the original Switch's 256. The Switch 2 is tripling its RAM as well as increasing the speed by just under three times the amount as well. We are getting clock speeds that are in the ballpark of 25% of what we saw in the original Switch when docked and over 50% in handheld mode. The Switch 2 will most likely support DLSS and ray tracing as well, whereas the Switch did not have any of that. So to be clear, the Switch 2 is not up to par with the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, but it's not really intended to. 
it is indeed a massive leap forward in power and capability over the Nintendo Switch 1. And in terms of pure hardware power, it is definitely lacking compared to the premium and base consoles of the current generation from Sony and Microsoft. However, it's very intriguing that Nintendo is bringing this in a portable package. It's going to compete with a lot of the PC gaming handhelds that you see out there now and also provide that first party touch from Nintendo, which is, well, it, sales have proven and fans have proven that's something that's very hard to beat. You really can't beat that. In DLSS and ray tracing for the first time in a Nintendo console and DLSS is very intriguing. And I'm honestly very excited to see what Nintendo is going to do with that. Their first party studios have done such a great job with the Nintendo Switch 1 and what they can do with the limited horsepower that that thing has. That thing was out of date the day it launched by a couple of years, actually. So they were already working with aging hardware day one on that console. And it's very impressive to see what first party companies have done with the Nintendo Switch. And I'm extremely excited to see what they're going to do with the Switch 2 with this much more horsepower and additional technologies not possible in the original Switch. But I want to know what you guys think. Are you hyped for the Nintendo Switch 2? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And that's all I have for you today. Until the next video, peace.